Welcome everyone to our Resurrection Sunday evening service. And let's start by taking our chorus books and turning over 243, 243. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Number 243. <laughs> Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Back to number 32. Number 32. God hears and he answers prayer. Cast on Jesus your every care. Number 32 in our chorus book. is going to come and lead us. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we can come to church and thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here. And Lord, we rejoice and we've been rejoicing all day. And of course, we rejoice about it every week of the year that you are a Savior that's alive. And Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts tonight May you give the preacher, give Brother Mitchell the power of God upon his message this evening. And may uh, all of us be in tune to the word of God as it's preached. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to every heart and meet every spiritual need here, Lord. And we, we are excited about the miraculous word of God that speaks to all of our hearts, regardless of what our needs are, uh, whenever it's preached from the, from the pulpit. And I pray, Lord, that... Uh, you would save souls and help people to um, make things right with you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help every church member here be on fire for you and 
Help us, Lord, to honor you tonight by paying attention and getting what we can out of the service this evening for Christ's sake. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you promise to sing out, I'll let you sit down. And we'll take our hymn books and we'll turn to number 128. 128. Wounded for me, wounded for me, there on the cross, he was wounded for me. 128. a special weekend for us. The Lord allowed us to get into another nursing home yesterday. Uh, again, that's a blessing when God gives uh, his favor. Uh, and so it seems like uh, more, it's like, hey, could you have a, I think we have more places that will open up to us than we have people to, to go fill. That's a tremendous blessing. So we had seven in a brand new service yesterday. That was a blessing. Lord gave us a good morning on the buses and I heard of people getting saved, and boy, uh, Leslie likes to smile, but you want to really see her smile, ask her about the young lady she got to lead to the Lord this morning. Uh, so anyway, uh, tremendous blessing, what a, what a special day it has been. Ushers, we'll have you come forward at this time, and uh, let's see, John, I'll have you hurdle the chairs. We're watching. Uh, um, and come on up and, and, and pray for us. Um, all right, Wednesday, late morning, Jolly 60s at 11 a.m. Thursday night, uh, we will have workers' meeting at 645, midweek service at 7, and our King's Kids will, will meet again this week. Friday evening, RU Recovery at, at 7 p.m. This next Sunday starts our spring bus campaign, uh, and be, so be in prayer for that. Get, uh, hopefully have some exciting things and get some addresses, get some contacts to work on over the summer. Preaching conference, normally we would be saying is three weeks from today, but we did bump it back one week later than 
we're used to, but four weeks from today is preaching conference being prayer, even for maybe those that don't know if they can make it or not. They're trying to work out the logistics and they would like to be here. But just pray that our own hearts would be stirred. The Lord would be giving the, just the right messages to the men who will come. And the Lord will just bless that time. But again, keep, keep the spring campaign in your prayers as well. Then, uh, uh, young people, if your parents go to church here, uh, if you invite three people to the uh, spring campaign activities, you can swing by the front desk and get one of their little wooden tokens uh, starting this week. And uh, after church and those, uh, on those Sunday afternoons, in the very back by the Noah's Ark mural, you can redeem that for an ice cream on Sunday afternoons. So be, be thinking about that and, and we'll look forward to seeing what God can do in this uh, as, the, as things warm up Looking forward to getting the gospel out there. I'm so glad somebody got the gospel to me. And uh, Lord, help us as a church to be busy about getting the gospel to others as well. Brother Patrol. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the resurrection, Lord. And uh, as we heard, Lord, how uh, we're all men most miserable if you didn't rise from the dead. And uh, we thank you so much for that and the gift of salvation that you've given to us. I pray that you'd uh, bless this uh, offering and uh, the service to follow. In your name, amen. amen.
again and let's turn number 222 there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins number 222 and let's stand together as we sing there is a fountain
then back towards the beginning of our hymn book, 118, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, 118. Together on the first.
get through that song. Whew. What a Savior. Turning your Bibles tonight to uh, Psalm 73, if you would. Let's go to that last verse. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Tonight, as we, as we think about the Lord's Supper, I, I'm glad that He isn't gone. And we're remembering what he did, but he's alive. And we're remembering what we did. What he did. Psalm 73, 28. It says there, but it is good for me to draw near to God. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Tonight, let's think for a little bit about drawing near to God. Lord, I do pray that you'd be with us this evening. Lord, uh, we, we're, Lord we've, we've sinned. I just thank you for cleansing, oh God. Uh, other, otherwise, I, I couldn't possibly ever hope to come into your presence, a pure and holy and just and wonderful and clean and awesome God, Lord, and we but sinners, and yet through forgiveness and the cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus, we can, we can know what it means to draw near to you, O oh God. Forgive us that we don't take advantage of that more often. Lord, as Asaph says here, it is good for me to draw near to God. I pray, Lord, that that would be our heart's cry tonight and then on into the rest of our lives. It is good for me to draw nigh to God. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Draw us to yourself and, and show us some special things. As we look in your word, Lord, and then we take the Lord's Supper. Remembering that Christ died and rejoicing that he rose again. We ask these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. So here, um, I'm going to look at various times where the Bible talks about drawing near to God or, or drawing nigh to God and, and just draw some, draw some points from those. So here we, we see a a Asaph, uh, you see that at the beginning of, uh, look back to the beginning of Psalm 73. It says Psalm 73, a psalm of Asaph. Uh, uh, in the very first verse there, truly God is good to Israel, even to such 
as are of a clean heart. Well, that's, a, that's one of the themes of a, of a night where we think of the Lord's Supper, isn't it? A clean heart. And then that last verse, it is good for me to draw near to the Lord. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Here we see that the first point, we see a drawing near of humility. A drawing near of humility. And, and you don't really see it there in the verse, but in the chapter you do. So I'll, I'll jump through and look at a couple of verses, and then we won't stay here long. We'll come, run to a couple other places. But if you look at Asaph, you can look at First Chronicles uh, 6 and First Chronicles 15 and First Chronicles 16 and Second Chronicles 29. Asaph was a seer. He was a prophet. He was a preacher. Did you know that it doesn't matter who you are, even a preacher? It's good to draw near to the Lord. Well, you'd say, well, maybe some people just live. Oh, no, no, every human being, we're all sinners. It's good for preachers and everyone else to constantly being drawing near to the Lord. He was a chief musician. Also, you see that in there, uh, not just a musician, but a chief musician. Do you know all of these people here? What a blessing it was to hear the orchestra tonight. What a blessing to hear the choir sing. Uh, what a blessing it was for me and my wife. I, I love to sing with her, and I, I love to think about the Lord. And Do you know it doesn't matter uh, what talents you get up here and, 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 and uh, uh, demonstrate? It's good for each and every one of us to draw near to the Lord. In this chapter, uh, uh, he, he had been envious of the wicked. So Asaph, he, he, went, through a, he went through a hard time. Uh, and so he looked around, and so you can kind of see there in, in verse 3, Asaph says, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So there was Asaph, and, the, uh, and sometimes, did you know even preachers and chief musicians, sometimes they start to look around and their vision is skewed. They look around and, and boy, he, he, see, he sees the people that act like God doesn't matter. And he's like, they don't have problems. Their life seems charmed. What in the world? They don't seem to have problems, and they seem prosperous. They're making money hand over fist, and then they talk. They, they, they run their big mouths about how I matter, and what I want matters, and he doesn't matter, and they seem to get by with it. Uh, and then me, I'm the opposite. <laughs> Seems like I have nothing but problems, and I don't have all that much money in my wallet that I don't, I don't feel sometimes, and, and sometimes it's just frustrating he said, I was, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You know, he wasn't near enough to God. You know your perspective changes when you draw near to God and everything down here looks different. It just looks different. He said in verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. I got close to God. I, first, I, I got to God's house, and then my vision started to get corrected. I started to see things clearly. And then in verse 21, he, he starts to feel bad. Ah, I was, I was upset with how, God, what's going on up there? It doesn't seem like there's justice down here. And then in verse 21, the humility starts to set, and he gets to God's house, and then he understands that, that, oh, there's a bigger picture here. I was seeing a little bit of the picture. There's a bigger picture, and it all becomes so much clearer when you're close to God. Verse 21, he says, thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins, a deep, visceral, conviction so foolish was I why did I ever look at those that stood against the things of God and envy them how foolish 
I was as a beast before thee. And then the, the conclusion of this chapter, he says, it is good for me to draw near to God. Because then there's a humility. And I begin to see, oh, you know what, it's not for what this world has to offer. And, and I was envying them, but actually I fear for them. Oh, God, help them not to think that there's pleasure down here and they can forget all about you. Oh, God, I fear for their future instead of envying it. And you know how that came to be? I, I got into the house of God and I understood that, boy, when I'm close to God, it's then that I see things clearly and only then. The drawing near of humility. It is good. For me to draw near to God. In our hymnal, on, on, on page 314, uh, we have the song, I am thine, O Lord. And of course, the chorus says, uh, draw me nearer, doesn't it? After each one of my points, uh, I'll, I'll look at one of the verses, but the drawing near of humility, and, and we think of verse 1, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. It is good for me to draw near to God. And then the chorus, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh God, let us draw nearer tonight to Thee in humility. A, a second passage that jumped out to me was, was there in Isaiah 29, 13. We're talking about drawing nearer to God. Uh, Isaiah 29, 13. So we saw the drawing nigh of humility Next, we see the drawing nigh of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. I've been there, have you? Where I, I can sing in the choir. Oh, I, I can sound real good but my heart isn't where it should be. Sometimes we draw near with our mouth. And it says, and with their lips do honor me. Oh, they talk. They, they, they'll tell everyone how important I am. But have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men the drawing near of hypocrisy, looking like God matters, and maybe even sounding like God matters, but being a giant fake. Oh, and sometimes when you're in that drawing near of hypocrisy, you convince yourself, well, I'm pretty sure that everyone in this church is the same way. I think maybe we're just all putting on an act and pretending together. Is that what church is? Is this all of us getting together and putting on an act? No, it isn't. It isn't. No, there's a lot of people here that all rejoice, not just with their mouth, but there's a heart that yearns for the things of God. Don't convince your, don't let your deceitful heart convince you that it's just an act that everyone is putting on. Don't have that drawing near of hypocrisy. Jesus brought this up again in the New Testament. There in Matthew 15, verses 7 through 9. Jesus said, ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Boy, looking good for their fellow man and forgetting all about me. Is there anyone here like that tonight? Young person, do you have your very own walk with God? Older person, are you talking a big talk? But in your heart of hearts, you know you aren't right with God. Oh good, I, I can't wait to get my cup and, and, and bow my head and pretend like all this matters. Oh, it's, it's not a time to pretend. It's a time to, oh God, I want my heart to be real before you. Not a drawing nigh of hypocrisy. Verse 2 of I am thine, O Lord, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh God, help us to be real tonight. What did he say? In that, in that, Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. Uh, that that kind, of, kind of brings us to our next drawing near there in Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I see here a drawing near of hope. A drawing near of hope. Uh, Hebrews 7, 18 and 19. For there is, I hear some pages rattling, I'll give you a second to get there. Hebrews 7, 18 through 19. For there is verily a disannulling. That has the idea of a cancellation, a putting away. There is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. This better hope that fixed the weaknesses of what had gone before, and there was a disannulling of, of what had gone before the, the sacrificial system, the ironic priesthood. Christ had come and fulfilled all those things. The shadow had come and gone, but now the reality was here. The bringing in of a better hope by which we draw nigh unto God. Oh, here we have the drawing near of hope. Here we contrast the wonder of Christ's priesthood with the weakness of Aaron's. There was neither power nor profit in his priesthood uh, except in the shadow and then faith in the reality. Uh, although his priesthood was elaborate, his priesthood with, was gorgeous and surrounded with rich and symbolic ritual, it was just a shadow of the reality of the true priesthood and able to make nothing perfect. See it there in verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect. There was no satisfaction for God or a man in it. It was bankrupt. It was unprofitable. What did the Bible say in the end of verse 18? The disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. It was unable to make anything perfect. Yet God, by his very nature, demands perfection. Isaac Watts wrote, not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give the guilty conscience peace nor wash away one stain. All of that 
served its purpose as a shadow of the reality of the one who would come. We see how weak and unprofitable the Aaronic priesthood was. God has annulled it and replaced it with something better, something that really works, Christ's priesthood. How ridiculous for any believer, Jew included, to go back to the rags and tatters of the Levitical system when we can have the reality and the perfectly clothed Christ our hope. Why can we draw near? Because of that better hope. And only because of that better hope. The law only repelled us. We have broken the law. All the law could do was repel us, push us away. You're dirty, he is clean. And the law, all the law could do was push us away and show us that we had no business being in his presence. But something came in that was better than the law. Christ satisfied it. The law was that light that shines on our filthy lives and causes us to want to flee and hide in the trees like Adam and Eve did when they became sinners. To hide. Um, on our prayer sheet... On the bottom of the third column, uh, in that box, we added a new line in there. Uh, we put in there, our police officers. So we have on there, so, so there you can think of Andy, Luce, and, and think of John Olson, and think of Seth Bollinger, and, and pray for those guys. Then you know, I was thinking about that spotlight. They have their car, right? Uh, how many of you wonder, is that an undercover policeman over there? And you look for the light on the side. Anyone else like that? You're like, hmm, hmm, <laughs> Anyway, boy, police and their spotlights, their searchlights. When you're doing what's wrong, boy, you despise the policeman's searchlight. Uh, maybe at nighttime you're breaking, you're vandalizing or whatever. You know, Brother Leek, you know, I'm just breaking stuff. So there's Brother Leek out doing what, you know, and, and you know, breaking windows of, of empty homes. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, the police car comes up, poof, the, the spotlight. No, not the spotlight. And you hide from it. And, and uh, he, he's, he's wondering, I hope this bush is, is doing a good job hiding me behind here. You know what? The law was that way where we were on the wrong end of the spotlight, weren't we? Just pointing out our sin. And, and we're like, in, well, we're, we're, we're worse than insects. The insects actually want, want, want to go to the light. We actually, ah, you know. And the insect, what are you doing? I'm going to run over there. Wow, light. <laughs> but you know because of Christ, you can be on the right side of the searchlight. Maybe, one, maybe a, a, a mom or a dad calls the police and says, hey, would you help me? My, my little one wandered out into the darkness. What, would you bring your car? What, would you bring your searchlight? What, would you come out this way and help me? I want to be behind the searchlight, uh, having it shine out and see, oh, oh, my heart goes out. I want to be on the right side of, of the searchlight. Boy, the law came in and shone on us, and we wanted to hide in those trees like Adam and Eve. But then the voice of God said, oh, you can come out. I have a covering for you. We can be on the right side of the spotlight. Say, here, come over here. Shine the light over there. Maybe there's someone over there I can help. Shine it over. There. Maybe there's a lost soul. Shine it. I want to be on the right side of that. Once that light shone, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, but because of a cleansing, I no longer have to hate the light. Verse 3 of... I am thine, O Lord. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. By the way, uh, believers, sometimes you're like, oh man, that sweet hour of prayer, I don't get that. How could you possibly spend an hour with God? I mean, I'm like, I, I'm, I'll, I'll pray through everything I can think of, and I look at my clock, and three minutes have elapsed. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. 
What in the world? But you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, Dr. Vogan talked about those spiritual disciplines a couple summers ago. It's, it's something that you can grow and build where you can spend that time with God. A- anything, just, just like a person that does three push-ups, you're like, ha, 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 that's enough for me. But they stick at it and pretty soon they're doing 20, 25, 30. Boy, that, that, that spiritual discipline, that spiritual exercise and this isn't just for the, it's like, yeah, that's, that, that's not even real. Who, who, who talks like that? Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. No, there's a reality there. Those that have known the Lord for a while and have actually worked. Uh, by the way, young person, maybe you can run some laps. Maybe you can, maybe you can curl some weight. But... And that's, and that's good. Exercise is good. But how strong are you when it comes to spending that time on your knees with God? Amen. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Hebrews 10.22 gives us our next one. Hebrews 10.22 It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance, hearts sprinkled. Here I have a drawing near of wholeheartedness, of wholeheartedness. And I know that starts with a W. That just blew the whole evening for some. Ugh. You can just misspell it and pretend you don't know better. (laughs) A drawing near of wholeheartedness. Or you could put hardiness, hardiness, H-A-R-D, hardiness. Drawing, Drawing near with a heart, with full assurance. It almost reminds of that Bible verse that says that we could enter boldly before the throne of grace. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. It says, uh, let us draw near with a true heart. Oh, be conscientious when you come. Come with a true heart, not with empty professions of faith. Just because you can fool your fellow man, God isn't your fellow man. My my kids do a pretty good job being respectful to me and my wife, but sometimes they forget. And my wife will say, I am your mother. Do you and I treat God like he's, I'm pretty good at fooling people and he's just like one of, no, he's like, he's not like anyone down here. Let us draw near with a true heart. Come conscientious when we come. Next, come confidently when you come in full assurance of faith. Oh, just like a, a, a little kid will, will run. Sometimes they'll, oh, I, oh, Dad, I'm sorry, I didn't even know you were in a meeting. I just saw you and was delighted and ran into your arms. Oh, I think God wants us to just run into his arms with full assurance of faith. No natural hesitation about approaching God. He has told us to come, and he's even told us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And then he says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, come conscientiously and confidently, but we must be cleansed. 
come clean when you come. And God has provided everything we need to come clean, hasn't he? Verse 4 says, There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. And then the last one we'll, we'll draw from James chapter 4. James chapter 4. The last one here, we have the drawing nigh of holiness. The drawing nigh of holiness. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Come with clean hands, uh, the, the outside clean before God. Come with a clean heart, the inside clean before God. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. He talked about being double-minded back in chapter 1, didn't he? Verse 8 where he talked about the double-minded man who's unstable in all his ways. He's double-spirited. He's laying his hands on two worlds, that which is eternal and that which is temporal, that double-minded, living for the things of this world and trying to live for the things of God. Oh, and there's an instability there. He says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. The drawing nigh of holiness. What a special promise. As I draw nigh to him, he will draw closer to me. Sin always creates that distance, doesn't it? Genesis 3, 8, we mentioned that already, where Adam and Eve thought, we've done wrong. And we have to flee from God now. And that's our new life. Hiding from God. And I was, I'm so glad that God invited man back into his presence. Of course, we think of, a, we think of that, that illustration where the, the older couple and the guy is driving, they, they have the pickup truck and they have the, the bench seat there and the, the wife, they've been married for years and years and she's on the opposite end of the bench seat there and she says hey remember back in the olden days after we were married boy we used to sit so close what happened to us and the husband you know just thought about it and he said well I, I don't rightly know everything about it but I, I do know one thing it, it wasn't me who moved It was Adam and Eve who ran away when they sinned. Sin creates a distance. But God invites us back into his presence. All kinds of things can con uh, contribute to distance. Failure to maintain a, a meaningful daily time of Bible reading and prayer entertaining known and unconfessed sin in our life, reading books and articles that aren't honoring to God, watching videos that so quickly cool any fire in my spirit toward the things of God and instead leave a fire and a craving for this world instead. Indulging in questionable amusements, neglecting the fellowship of God's people, ignoring the prompting of a conscience quickened by the Holy Spirit, willful disobedience to God's revealed will, failure to cultivate 
a walk with God and a growing knowledge of Christ. God's word is clear. Here he says, come back. Come back. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. The drawing nigh of holiness. Moses in, in Exodus 3, 5, he, he saw a burning bush and of course God knew how to get a guy's attention, didn't he? We men are pyromaniacs. Anything burning, you're like, I got to be a part of whatever that is. He starts to move a little closer and the Lord speaks to him. And God says something interesting. He says, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. God says, come to me. But, but you're going to have to let some things go. Because as you come, this is holy and sacred. He says, cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. If you're going to come, you're going to have to leave something right here to go be near the Lord. How precious are those things that you've got that would say, I can't draw near to God because I know I would have to drop this and this means too much to me. Oh, friend, there's nothing that matters more than being close to the God that gives you breath. God says, as you come closer, there are some things that you're going to have to leave behind. Which will you let go of? Me or that thing? You can only grasp one. I think some of you have heard of this. Uh, uh, there's something, there's a trap called the monkey jar trap. In Southeast Asia, uh, years ago, someone developed an ingenious method to catch monkeys alive and unharmed. The monkey trap they developed was very simple. The hunter would take a pot with a wide bottom and a narrow opening and bury the pot in the ground to where the opening of the jar was just above the ground. In the jar, the hunter would place a piece of fruit or nuts, and curiosity or hunger would attract the monkey to reach, you know, to, to squeeze their hand in through that tight neck and then open it up inside and then get a handful of whatever that thing was. As the monkey at attempts to extract the treat from the jar, he finds his fist full of food will not fit through the opening anymore. The monkey, excited and, and frustrated, may even scream out as he continues to hold on to the food, but he will refuse to let go of it. The monkey sees the hunter approaching. <laughs> and he's like, ah! You know, and he's like, ah! And, he, and he, the hunter is coming, and, and he's got a hold of whatever that thing is, but more, more screaming, more frustration. And then finally the monkey is caught. Instead of letting go of the food, the monkey holds on tighter and tries harder to dislodge its arm or fist of food from the jar. And the article here says that a lot of times people are like that. They've got a hold of something that's harming them. And there's a lot of screaming and there's a lot of anguish, and there's a lot of frustration, and the key is letting it go. Draw nigh. But you've got to cleanse those hands and have that clean heart. What are you laying hold on tonight? Your fist can only clasp one thing. Are you affixed on the eternal or the temporal? What did a 
Asaph say? Psalm 73, 28. It is good for me to draw near to God. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your love to us. Thank you for your precious word. Oh, God, work in our hearts tonight. Help us, Lord, to draw near to you. Oh, God, thank you that you invite us to stop hiding in the trees and to come out and have our shame and our guilt and our sin covered. Thank you, O oh God, for inviting us back into your presence. We do not deserve it. And what God, forgive us for not valuing that invitation enough. But Lord, help us tonight to do something about the preciousness of your invitation to draw nigh to you. It is good for us to draw nigh to the Lord. O oh God, be with us. I pray that you be with this time of invitation, work in our hearts. And God, as we have a time of the Lord's Supper, how precious, what a treasure it is, salvation. Help us to remember the awful price that was paid, O God the Father, to send your Son, all the anguish in your heart, and then the misery to have tasted the sin of every human being for the precious Lord Jesus, and then to die a death He did not deserve to die for us. Be with this time of invitation. We ask these things in Christ's precious name. Amen.